One of the most powerful features in Snapseed from Google is the new Curves tool. Curves can do amazing things, but they can also be very intimidating to master without a little guidance. Don't worry though, you have nothing to fear here. The kind of curves that we are going to create in this tutorial will add contrast with precision to our images and they are easy to understand. Right now, I have a tone chart on the screen in front of you. To understand curves for contrast, it helps to start out thinking in black and white. What you are looking at on the screen right now are all of the shades of gray that we could have in a black and white photograph, ranging from inky inky black all the way up to paper white. Now I've broken this diagram up into two sections. On the top side of the table, I've divided all of the shades of gray into five solid segments and labeled each of them. Starting on the far left, you have a segment for pure black, then a segment for very low, meaning very dark shades of gray. Next is a segment for the mid, meaning medium grays. Next, as you move further to the right, there's a segment for the high key tones, meaning the brighter shades of gray. And then finally, a segment for absolute paper white stuff. Across the bottom of this graph is the full gray ramp with no breaks between the tones, so that you can see that there are thousands of gray shades in between each of those chunky blocks up at the top. I've built this diagram to show you exactly what happens in here as we start to mess with the curve. When I tap right here in the center of the curves dialog box, a new control point appears. If I drag this point straight down with one finger, then everything in our diagram gets darker. Do you see how there is now little or no difference between the black and the low tones? Do you see how the high tones have become much darker? The only things that do not change when I move this control point around are the absolutes at either end of the chart. The absolutes don't change because inky black is already inky black and it cannot get any darker. The same is true for paper white. If I slide this control point straight up, then the opposite happens. When a point on the graph goes up, everything gets brighter. Now, there is no difference between the pure white zone on the far right and the rectangle next to it that used to hold the high tones. Moving a single control point around is helpful when you want to change the overall brightness of your entire image. Moving one point up or down on the graph is just like moving the brightness slider in Snapseed's Tune Image Tool. But the real beauty of curves is that we can add more than one control point to the graph to make one range of tones brighter and at the same time to make another range darker. Let me show you what I mean with a real image. Here's a photo that we worked on in a previous lesson. To get ready for this demo, I've added that gray ramp diagram across the top. Now, I like this photo as a black and white, but right now it feels a little flat. So let me bring up the curves tool and let's add some contrast. This time, I'm going to tap to create a new control point down here in the lower left quadrant. Notice how the image gets darker as I slide this point straight down. Next, I'll tap here to create a second control point. This one, I'll slide straight up. With two control points set like this, I'm pushing the high tones towards paper white, while simultaneously pulling the low tones down towards inky black. Watch when I tap on the before and after button, how the dark gray areas get darker while the light grays get lighter. Watch the shadows in the barn around the horse and watch those bright tones around the door frame. This push and pull of tones away from medium gray is exactly what the word contrast means in photography. Notice when I hold the before and after button down how the original image looks veiled, murky, just kind of washed out. When I let go, meaning when the curve that I have just created is active, see how the image becomes much stronger and much more eye-catching? That's what contrast can do for us. The shape that you see in the curves dialog box right now, where one point pulls the line down on the left and another point pushes the line up on the right is a classic S-curve for contrast shape. This shape to our curves is what we're gonna create again and again throughout this tutorial. I'm gonna tap on the check mark 
here to commit this change, and now I'll bring up another photo for us that I have not worked on at all yet. Here's one from Zion National Park that I shot with my phone a few years ago. I like this image in color, but since we're talking about adjusting the shades of gray with the curve, let's see how it would look if we start out in black and white. Ooh, that looks good. By choosing the orange filter here, I'm beginning to shape the shades of gray the way that I want them to be in this image. I'm going to commit this change, and now I can take things even further by adding another edit layer using the curves tool. The key to understanding curves is to think of this box as if it were a before and after diagram. Think of the x-axis as the before, and think of the y as the after. I'm going to overlay two gray ramps along the side here to help you visualize what the x and y represent. That diagonal line that runs across the graph, it represents the way things will be when they're changed. That line is called the transect. Right now, with no points on our curve, there is no change. Each tone on the x-axis currently maps to the same shade of gray on the y. But as soon as I tap here and create a point in the lower left and then move that point down, things begin to change. See how I'm moving that point down towards a darker shade of gray along the y-axis? So now I'll tap up here, create a second point in the upper right quadrant and push this one up. When I push this one up, do you see how I'm moving those tones up towards a brighter shade of gray along the Y? If I position these two control points just right, do you see how the transect, the diagonal line, still passes right through the middle of the graph? With my points set like this, our dark tones are getting darker. Our light gray tones are getting brighter. But since the transect crosses in the middle, the medium gray on the X still maps to medium gray on the Y. What we have done here is to add more contrast without making any changes to the brightness of our midtones. Okay, so if you've made it this far in this tutorial, then let me give you some additional advice for working with curves. First, try to use as few control points in here as possible. If you add extra points that you don't need, just drag them off the edge of the graph and they'll disappear. Also, if you make a total mess of things in here, you can always hit the cancel button, the X over there in the bottom left, to cancel out without making any changes. Or you can go to the styles and pick the neutral style to reset the whole graph. Second, always try and move your control points straight up and down along the graph. Weird things start to happen if you drag them around to the right or to the left. Third, a little change in here goes a long way. You don't need to drag a point very far to create a noticeable change. One more trick though. Adding one more point to the curve will give us even more control. I'm going to tap here, smack in the middle, to intentionally create one more control point. I can move this point up or down now to change the brightness of my midtones. Since, see, there's no rule that says that the transect must always cross right through the middle of the graph. In this case, I think this photo looks better if I move this point down just a little. I might need to adjust the other points around now, too. Usually, when we move any point on the curve, then we need to go back to the other points and do a little adjusting. The point is that this image really pops when the darks get a little darker, the midtones get darker too, and the lights get brighter. Bam! Now we have a strong black and white landscape. At this point, I should save my work, but I want to show you one more image real quick so you can see that curves for contrast are just as useful when working with a full color image. Here's a Montana springtime scene that I shot with my phone a few days ago. Even though this one is in color, it feels a little flat. To my eyes, there was a lot more drama in the late day sunlight and those shadows under the hay bale when I was looking out over this field. Just to demo, I'm going to skip over all the other wonderful features here in Snapseed, 
that I would ordinarily use on this type of image and go right to curves. Since this is a full color image, I need to double check that we are working on either the RGB or the luminance channel before I start putting points on the graph. The other choices in here are powerful, but not the right ones when we're talking about contrast. In this case, and in most cases, I think that the RGB channel will work fine for our color image. Once again, I'm going to start by putting a point here in the lower left. I'm going to drag it straight down. Another tap here will create a second control point that I'll use to push my highlights up. I can make the brights in this image a bit brighter, but I need to be careful not to go too far and blow out any of the detail in the brightest clouds up there in the sky. I'll tap here and add one more point right in the middle like I did last time. Only this time, I'm going to move this point up just a little to make my midtones a little brighter. A little adjusting. And voila. From this to this in no time using only one tool here in Snapseed. That wasn't too hard. Now there are lots more that curves can do for us, but those other jobs will have to wait for another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.